Hi there guys, welcome back. And today I'm going to continue on showing you Planet Side 2, the free to play MMO. Last time, if you didn't see it, I suggest you go watch it. It was the infantry and basic game introduction. Today I'm going to show you about ground vehicles. And uh, we're going to head into the VR training. The one benefit about this training facility is, I forgot to mention that last time, is when you select any class, you can use any weapon, even those that are not unlocked. You can see I took that one, Circus Unlock, and Equip, so I can try them out before buying them. If I like them. The same thing can be done with all upgrades and all vehicles. But today we're going to look at vehicles and especially ground vehicles. First vehicle we're going to look at is the Flash. The Flash is a small 4x4 motorcycle. Uh, not sure how big it is, there's no real stats on it, but I'm sure it's around, I'm guessing, uh, 450 or 600 cubics. It can be equipped with a weapon, but you have to unlock the weapon. And it looks kind of strange with the weapon on it, it's sort of placed <laughs> on the side. The Flash is nothing but a transport unit, really. It gets you from A to B really fast. Well, not really fast, but okay, fast. And you can upgrade it with a few items. So something like the smoke. <laughs> it basically took it off a plane and placed it on your, your unit. Radar. There we go. Small radar on the side. Looks more sensible. Defense. Well... I haven't really upgraded any defense in this unit myself because the only good this does me is transport me from A to B really fast. But let's just uh, put some different things on it and show you how it looks. There you go. That's the flash. I have no idea why there is this roll bar if they're afraid it's going to tip backwards over or what. Some people might say it's for this guy who's sitting right here to have his feet on. You can have a passenger, as you can see, sitting back here. Right now we uh, equipped it with a small shotgun. It's kind of weird because you can't really aim with it. Well, you can, but... I've never found any real use for it. But as you can see, it's a small, fast unit. Where are we going? Well, it says 80 here, but that's a straight up lie. <laughs> but it's fun, and uh, I use it a lot because uh, if Especially when you have conquered one one continent or one area and you're moving on to the next. On the flash, moving on, unless you can get a ride from somebody. Next unit is the Harasher. It's a, it wasn't in the beginning this vehicle, it's been added later. By default it has this turret, but uh, as you know, we can add anything because it's in the test. So, we're going to add something fun. We're going to add night vision, reload magazine size, of course, and capacity. Utilities, well, it's the same as the other one. We're going to hit it with some turbo so we can get some speed. You can get a different frame. Oh, sorry, defense equipment. Some armor plating on the side. We can look cool. Steering ability or oh, superpower. And haunt, of course. Let's uh, let's try this guy out. If you notice top right, you can already see there's room for three guys. And the driver don't have access to uh, any weapons, but uh, he should really just focus on driving. 
Whoops. And I can't even do that. <laughs> it's a strange little vehicle. Uh, the shape is very strange. I do not like it at all. I tend to go very aggressively against these vehicles because I find them ugly. So if I see any enemy using them, I don't mind dying just to chase them down because they are very, very ugly. But it's a very useful vehicle. That's another thing. The second guy, he has uh, the ability to use the turret, as you can see, holding right click because uh, we added the night vision, so we can see the enemies over there. And uh, the guy in the back, well, he's kind of exposed and you can shoot him if uh, you come up to a vehicle and there's an enemy sitting right here. Funny vehicle, but uh, very ugly. But it's fast. And it's good for transport. Weapon-wise, well, it's kind of expensive to upgrade a transport vehicle like that. We're going to skip this one because that's the most important ground vehicle in this game. So we're going straight to the light tank. That's the lightning. Uh, we're just going to add some certifications to it to make it a bit more appealing. <laughs> there we go. Weapon-wise, this default weapon is actually quite good. You can see it's 475 damage. You can get weapons that's way more. You can see that's 925. This weapon shoots six shots in a row. Boom, 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 boom. While this one just shoots one. You can check out down where it says ammunition, it says 1 of 25. So we're just going to leave the default weapon on it. There's also a machine gun if you're more into that. And just fool around with it. We're going to add thermal instead because I prefer that over anything and spawn the vehicle. This is a one person vehicle only. As you can see, upgraded, it's very fast, and you can drift with it. <laughs> Whee! Okay, let's uh, let's uh, just see how fast it is. You can see uh, right here, kilometers per hour. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 80, 85, that's pretty fast for a tank. And let's just test the thermal imaging. Check this out. This is my preferred view when uh, attacking because, uh, did you notice the guys up in the tree? There's also one right there. And you are able to see it players. Let's test out the gun. See, that's quite fast. Unfortunately, here in the training, you can't see how much damage it's going to do to the vehicle. But luckily, over here, they added some friendlies. See the blue guys. When you shoot at them, you can see the damage taken. So let's just shoot at the, at the heavy tank. Sure, all of the bullets hit, but good damage. Oh, this one is almost dead. Then I'll try. Oh, well, maybe this air unit. Oh, it's completely able to take that out just like that. Pretty good, and yes, you can take out heavies. Especially if there's a unsecure guy playing the heavy. Some of the details about this tank are actually quite good. Look at the low profile and check out this hill. You are safe behind this hill right now. Some people may panic and drive around and 
do all sorts of stupid things, but you have to remember the armor and the, the way you have to protect yourself. So it might be better to do this than having the front out this way. Because if you are doing this, you have all of this exposed before you're able to shoot. While um, this way you will only have the bag exposed before you're able to shoot. And you can see there's a lot of recall. Uh, recall. <laughs> recall. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's very hard to control and point at the same place, so you have to steer a bit while shooting. And yes, we have smoke screen on this. <laughs> this is good when uh, you're getting locked on by somebody with the weapons. There are weapons, infantry weapons, that will lock you. So that's the light tank. Let's have a look at the heavy tank. The Prowler. Nice tank. Two weapons, but that's because it has rooms. Rooms? <laughs> it has room for two guys. It's very important to remember what type of armor you're going to use. Front armor. Good idea if you're going to point your front against the enemy side armor. If you're going to point your side against the armor. So let's just put some front armor on this bad boy. You can see it right there. Performance, control or speed? Well, I'm more to speed. Weapons, well, not so many to choose from, but they are pretty good regardless which one you use. 1200, 650, 1100 for the starter weapon. Okay, let's just stick with that. We're going to add zoom this time so you can see the difference. Infant or your co-pilot, well, the weapon selection is a lot better. You get different types of weapon, minigun, sort of a mini cannon. You can see Ranger looks like a 40 millimeter something. Cobalt, that's sort of a cannon as well, dual cannon. But this one is one of the most used and, well, I shouldn't really need to explain why. Anti-vehicle. There we go. One thing you might notice at once with this tank is the turret. The cannons are on the left side of your camera. And the height of this tank is not so good. You can see you're able to look above the hill. Which means you are also able to be hit above the hill. Two shots, you have to reload. But you do a lot more damage. Smoke of course. <laughs> and here you can see the ability of the 2x zoom. It's, I, I don't really find it that useful. Well, it's nice, but I can see them from here. No big difference there. Tank. It's not so fast. We chose speed and you can see we can just get it up to 70. Well, that might be the terrain. Let's drive it downhill. Yeah, 71. Okay. Let's tank. Stand out and look at it. Kind of weird looking, kind of huge, chunky, wouldn't call it really a futuristic tank, it's very bulky and uh, strange looking. That one right there is the NC light tank, you can see it looks more like a regular tank, but that one down here, sorry, heavy tank, that's the 
guys are referred to as the aliens. You can see there's that's a hover tank. And they can't turn their turret because there is no turret. You can see the cannon is right there. That's something you really need to consider. Just remember they are heavy armored from the side. You can kill them. But you have to be careful about their front because they do a lot of damage. But nothing we can't handle, of course. Infantry, oh sorry, the second position, well, I added the rocket launcher and you can see it's very good against vehicles. But, hey, that's the idea with a rocket launcher, right? The last vehicle I'm going over today is the Sunder, or Sundi, as some people call it. You will hear it in the chat. It is the most important vehicle in this game. I have upgraded this vehicle a lot, and I have bought weapons for it, because I need it. That vehicle gives me a lot of certification points. It actually earns me... Oh, I got one now from... I don't know what. <laughs> I earn... Well, this one is one of the... No? Oh. This one. There we go. Bulldog. And uh, let's put a fury on that one. There we go. The thing with this vehicle, it looks like just a, uh, well, battle bus. But utility, you have different utilities. And these utilities is what makes this vehicle special. Gate shield diffuser. <laughs> when in case you are able to slip through enemy gate shields, last for 14 seconds, that means you can drive through shields with this vehicle. You can fill it up with max suits and drive it right through the enemy base and they can't do shit about it. Well, at least for 14 seconds. Wow. Unfortunately, very, very few people use this. Most people, including myself, use this advanced mobile station. You get this weird thing on top of the vehicle. You can see it's right there. Defense-wise, doesn't really matter. Mine guard, well, if you're going to drive over mine, great. Doesn't really happen that much because people don't really use mines in this game. Maybe we should and earn some monies. <laughs> anyway, auto repair. I, I like this because it will try to repair itself when damaged. Steering or speed? Well, you know me, speed. Horn? No, thank you. And, of course, appearance. Spawn now, please. Here we go. Driver's seat. And notice how many people need to place in this vehicle. See, I chose speed and we're going to hit, yeah, there we go, 80 kilometers per hour. This vehicle is a real all-terrain vehicle, even though it's like a truck. But you are able to drive it almost anywhere. 12 seats, including the driver. Second seat is uh, the front gunner. See, right there. The third seat is the rear gunner. There go. And the rest of the seats are just for transport. <coughs> okay, here's the deal. If you notice this vehicle, I can see this right below its uh, naming, you can see there's something called deploy. When you deploy, I'm going to do it now, B. Oh, I have to remove, there we go. And you can see you got legs out and a console on the side of the vehicle, actually on both sides. Now, people are able to spawn on this vehicle when killed. So you have a mobile spawn platform out at the combat zone. So you need to, well, park this vehicle really safe. So if we were going to attack over there, you would not park this vehicle so the enemy could see it. 
they would of course know it's there because you're going to get a lot of attention because people are going to be spawning on you. And another error most people do is they are going to park right here. Let's try that. Let's uh, switch to this guy. So you're parked right here, the enemies can't hit you. And people are spawning here, they're coming out, shooting, and they're even trying to repair the vehicle because maybe uh, some of their units are trying to kill it. So you will have this area full of friendlies back on this side of the stone, and back here you will have enemies, only this stone dividing it. Now, what will happen is people like this guy will go up here, they will take their C4 and they will just drop down. There we go. And uh, if you notice up here, it took out half the health. So if he has bought two C4 blocks, he will be able to take it out. Not only to take it out, he will kill most of the people standing here. He will be on a kill streak, 10 kills or something sometimes. It's crazy. So. It's a very, very bad idea to pack so close to the stone. You can see it's repairing itself right now. That's because we have the auto repair system. Now, what you want to do is actually, well, it's going to suck for some people, but this location right here, check it out. You are in uh, cover from the tanks, but most importantly, you can have units standing right here where I am now repairing or repairing back here. The upside is you won't have people coming up to you with C4 blowing the shit out of you. The downside is for a location like this you will have people up here, infiltrators standing with a sniper just or maybe up there shooting people. So it's a compromise. Every time you place this vehicle, you have to consider these things. Unfortunately, most people don't. They just fucking drive the damn thing right up there. Oh, we have to attack uh, this area here, so we're just going to drive right here. Run right into this rock here. Yeah, please, yeah. They're spamming B because they want to. There we go, and there's fine. That's a problem. Vehicle will be taken out pretty fast, and you haven't really saved squad. This vehicle is the game changer. Unfortunately, next pass, next patch, they are going to nerf it a bit. They're going to make zones where you can park this and deploy it. So that's a bit of a problem. In the visa we could also deploy from air units. They also removed that because, yeah, I don't know. And I'm even playing the faction. We are not winning, but we are not losing. We are kind of in the middle. And I prefer that. That means there's always plenty to kill, meaning there's always plenty of certifications to get. That's all, guys. That was the vehicle section of my planet side review yeah let's just call it a review my next episode on planet side 2 will be covering the air units <coughs> it's a bit shorter but hey thanks for watching guys comment rate subscribe if you have any suggestions with gameplay let me know if you have any suggestions for future videos on planet side let me know as well Remember, if you want to play, I'm on Autism. See you next time. Bye.